a little bit of a mess in front of the high tunnel in our backyard. This is the cattle panel high tunnel made, oh, six or seven years ago now. I'll link here to uh, videos describing how this was built if you're interested. But that's aside, um, we are trying to transition the space from being a place where seed saving was happening. So I'm going to talk about lettuce, uh, bolting lettuce in order to save seed, some mustard, some rose campion, and transitioning it to be prepared to start seeds that will bring us into the winter with food. And that's what we're working on today. I'm going to share some updates on this structure and how that transition looks, so stick around. I certainly could have done a better job, you know, with quote-unquote before pictures, but uh, this is the far end of the tunnel. I'm slowly working my way in, and so imagine that this is the before and that this is the after. So it's not a clear cut at all. It's not a tillage. It's not a hard reset, especially with the heat and dryness that we have. This is all a building up and additive process with the removal being through the process of cutting. So we are cutting down these lettuces that are bolted enough that we can save seed. We'll make a separate video talking about that process. It's actually not a big deal at all. There were mustards that we left in here and those we're gonna harvest seed from as well. And so it's a chance to bring compost from the chicken yard, which this is the material that's been in the winter run. I don't know exactly how well it will grow. We are adding some pretty gross anaerobic compost tea that has a funky smell, but seems to be pretty stimulating. It remains to be seen, but this way we can wash nutrients from this uh, top material down into the soil below. We're a little ways out from seeding or planting in here, but we're uh, setting the stage, so to speak. So the plants that were growing on the left side or the south side there were predominantly these plants. There's Italian oak leaf lettuce on the left and there's rose campion on the right there. And it's not the most handsome treatment here, but when we're doing bulk seed harvesting, the easiest thing is to have a large container. It could be even a, a cleaned out wheelbarrow or a tarp right next to a space. And rather than pulling them out for the soil disturbance, we're simply cutting them really low so the root system can die back in the soil there and feed the long-term soil. We're going to pull all these lateral leaves off and send those to the chickens and then either bundle this up and hang it upside down in the garage or more realistically harvest the seed from them directly into this container and think about where we're going to sow them. There's a fair bit in there and it looks pretty ripe. And we certainly could have done well to have done this sooner. You can see there's three basil in here that up until 10 minutes ago were just completely shrouded by lettuce and mustard. They would have done a lot better if they had more light, more access earlier in the season. I think they'll still be able to do a great job of growing for the rest of the year, but it is a lesson for us. We'll explore this in deeper detail in the large high tunnel in our neighbor's yard, but the pursuit of hot weather annual crops like tomatoes, like pepper, like basil, interspersed with overwintered cool weather crops that you're hoping to save seed from, that's a complex design and we're having a lot of issues with how much overlap there is between how long these plants stay and the needs of the hot weather crops. So that's something we need to really understand better. Our friend Tom is helping us out today. He's been here for a few days helping us on a bunch of projects. Tom's been wonderful. Thanks for being here and helping. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and he's stripping the leaves off this Italian oak leaf lettuce. That's going to all go to the chickens. They'll adore that. And then these stalks are now a little bit more bare and we can both uh, harvest the seed and then hang them upside down to mature more seed in the garage. And you can see here's some seed from the larger high tunnel uh, we started to harvest some of the coriander or cilantro and those are hanging upside down in a cool well-ventilated space. These are various mustards and arugulas that we'll go through and process for seed later. And this is some lettuce that was cut yesterday. You can see it's very very close to just having lots of seed fall out. It's a lot like dandelions. They are the same family after all. Gotta eat your greens! There's still a lot of lettuce to be cut out on the far end, but uh, on the north side now you can kind of see the characters that remain. We're just still dumping compost in a rough way pinning down whatever vegetation in here could be enjoyable by the chickens. We're 
cutting and sending to them and whatever is quote unquote weedy is just getting buried under a deep layer of fresh compost. And these tomatoes now get to be the canopy for the rest of the season. I bet they'll still be able to make some good fruit. They're just a little far behind, but that's all right. The chard will leave and just keep harvesting that which goes over the walkway. And now the mioga is, we've tried to dig out a lot of this this last winter. Uh, we'll get a bunch of compost around them and we will try to find homes for more of them because they don't need to be in this high tunnel, they can be outside. Still got the lettuce on this side to cut, my gosh, so much in here. I'm slowly refilling the tank from our rainwater so we can start watering in there a little bit more thoroughly. More lettuces, that's about as much as we need, probably thousands and thousands of seed harvested. This area on the right, I'm just gonna leave as it is so we can see how this lettuce maturates. How does it work with the rose campion? Can enjoy being in with the Mioga ginger. It's just a beautiful little combo there. And now it's open for Sash to decide what she wants to do in the soil coming into the late summer and getting things established for fall and winter. We'll probably add a little more compost. We'll soak it through with some compost tea and then water it gently either transplant in or seed it kind of ASAP with some mulch and water it another thorough time and it should be off and running. And we get to see some of these fun side things we kind of lost, like this back corner has turned into a, a, an Hablitzia jungle, Caucasian mountain spinach, uh, perennial spinach vine, that for the longest time I had such a difficulty trying to figure out how to grow them from seed. And we realized we put one plant in the far corner, the least accessible corner in here, they grow up and over, they just naturally find the trellis and then they drop seed where they choose and the soil's pretty rich. We've got it in basil and sweet marjoram and ginger. So all those will disappear in the fall and their seeds can fall naturally in the fall, germinate as they're ready throughout the winter or early spring. And then a year later, well, I don't want to disturb them, but there's probably 50 to 100 seedlings in there. So we might actually be able to offer that plant by letting letting them drop seed when they want, where they want, and getting out of the way. So what a nice surprise that those things work on their own. And Hoblitzia woven through Mioga ginger. What a beautiful combo. Unwatered since the beginning of spring. How the heck is that possible? We'll finish up with this for now, get it watered, seeded, do an update video in a week or two or a little ways later. Uh, maybe if Sasha's into it, we can film as she decides what goes into here and what that decision-making process looks like. If there's interest, we can do more thorough video on uh, the processing of that lettuce seed and some mustard seed and the like. Our system is incredibly rudimentary, but it works well enough that we're able to save seed for, from some basic open pollinated plants. And it's pretty accessible and easy. So let me know in the comments if that's something you actually want to see uh, us go into detail, but you probably get the gist of it just by seeing this video. So is it even needed? Um, that's our transition of the high tunnel in the backyard from weedy slash seedy, the spirit of trying to save seed in a, an enclosed space there, to making the groundwork for the fall and winter bounty that we hope to set in motion ASAP so it has time to grow. I'd love to see this space completely filled with extremely dark, deep leafy greens that are harvestable throughout the cold times of winter. And what we do now is what will make that possible. Thanks for watching.